Good afternoon, happy Monday. Today is the 5th of April. I hope everyone had a really good Easter. Uh, I'm sorry that this review is late and my thoughts about the Bahrain Grand Prix are a bit late. Um, I've also tried a different room, so hopefully you like it, different part of the house. Um, have we all recovered from the exciting race of Bahrain last week? Um, I, for one, am done with the track. I think we've seen a lot of it in many iterations in the past four months. Um, so I'm ready for it to be, uh, for that chapter to be closed and for us to move on to the next tracks. So nevertheless, uh, I'm going to give my, um, highlights and lowlights. I'm going to call them gold stars and sad faces for this season. <laughs> Let's see how far I get to. And then my hot takes, uh, and observations from round one. So my gold stars. So first star to Lewis Hamilton to congratulate on the victory. Um, he did very well. Um, obviously, um, probably unexpected win. They were not the favorites to claim victory, but the tire strategy and um, and his defensive masterclass and defensive driving really um, shown through, and that's why he was able to win. Um, I'm not surprised being a tire, you know, tire management of Lewis has always been a massive strength for us. My gosh, we've seen it so many, you know, times and times and times again, and doing the right defensive moves. And then, you know, potentially, if you want to, you know, who wants to be on the fence about the turn four incident with, with Max, um, you know, nevertheless, uh, hats off to Lewis. He deserved that victory and did very well. Max also gold star number two. I'm sure they're disappointed that they didn't win. It was a very, um, they should have won. Um, but you know, it's only first round and you know, it's, it's a long season. We have 23 races this year. Red Bull are the favorites. They have the package this year, you know, coming out of preseason testing and they're very, it seems very confident so far. So let's see how they do. Um, my, my third and fourth gold star, well, congratulations to Yuki Tsunoda for grabbing, uh, points on his debut for Alpha Tauri and Landon Norris, um, finishing really well as because I think we're seeing potentially a battle for uh with McLaren for best of the rest and potentially battling with Ferrari um on to the low lights and my sad faces first off Aston Martin um Stroll only finishing lowly P10 sub not doing very well at all having probably an awful first race um as, as I say Newton's law so anything chaotic happened did happen so anything that potentially went bad, went bad from preseason testing to practice to qualifying with the yellow flags, getting the penalty with the yellow flags, and then obviously <clears throat> having that error with, with Ocon and um, hitting him in a very similar thing that he did with Max in 2019 at Silverstone. Um, on to Pierre Gasly, unfortunately suffered major damage with um, with a car and had to retire. Uh, he I think it was with Daniel Ricciardo. They had a bit of a tangle um, during the safety car after their safety car restart. Uh, unfortunately, he did not was not able to perform to what we thought the AT um, the ATO2 would be able to. So let's hope that for Imola they'll do better. Um, Valtteri Bottas, Bottas and Bahrain pit stops don't go together. I think he is happy to be out of Bahrain, um, happy to be done with it for a while. So um, he finished a. P3, which is fine, but, you know, the last couple of years, he's done quite well in opening races. Um, and, you know, him, you know, we have to say he's there doing well for Mercedes, but he's boring. He's been boring and not taking the fight. And we have to see what will happen again, early days, round one. Um, so let's see. And then, hot and on to my hot takes. So the first off was uh, Nicholas Latifi. Of Williams out uh, had to retire because of um, his boost pressure I think failed uh, after a lap one same issue that Aston Martin had I wonder if it's a Merck issue or something separate just something to point out um, track limits and stewarding and decisions inconsistent decisions being made and I don't know I know it's part of the sport and why we love it but it's just you know it, it's always interesting to me that there isn't a consistent rotation of people or consistent people that go to every single race that make these decisions or you know they change willy-nilly like track limits or x is is being used during practice but not during qualifying or the race or vice versa it's just 
it doesn't make any sense. So you're either in or you're out or three strikes and that's it. That's what I would say. And then after round one, I think there's clear, I guess, clear tiers of teams so far uh, in the order. So you have your top tiers and your front runners, the Mercedes and Red Bull. Then you have your battle for ter third best of the rest um, among McLaren, Ferrari, and AlphaTauri. I think that will change from track to track and how they go on with the development and see how much they decide to move the development to next year. Be curious to see. And then you have your bottom midfield between Alpine and Aston Martin. Obviously still early days, but it's quite obvious it seems to me that Alpine running an old engine, old power unit, and then Aston Martin really suffering from their low rig philosophy that's similar to Mercedes. Um, and then be curious to see any other issues, but first of all, you know, not performing to what they did uh, with Racing Point last year. And your blue flags, your black back markers, so an Alfa Romeo, Williams, and Haas. Um, I also personally enjoyed the battle among um, Alonzo Vettel and Sai, so former Ferrari versus former Ferrari versus current Ferrari, all of these people kind of um, battling for a couple laps. That was fun to see. And we have Imola in the next couple weeks. I'm looking forward to it just because it's a, a little bit more of a technical track, a bit more old school. I know there's going to be a massive emphasis on qualifying and it might be a bit of procession. Um, but I'll be curious to see because it's a bit of a different track. So I would expect potentially, um, I think AlphaTauri might do quite well. That's their home track. They did more, they did their shakedown there and did a bunch of testing. So they have potentially more data. Um, Ferrari coming in with a potentially new package. Um, so I expect the Italian teams to make a statement because it's one of their home races. Um, I do expect McLaren and Ferrari to do really well. Um, and maybe, I don't know, I think Alphatara actually might be third um, for that race. So that's it for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed. It's a bit of a short one. Um, let me know in the comments what you have. And uh, also, random question, anyone watch Extreme E? So tell me what you thought of it. Um, have a good day. See you soon. This has been Felicia on F1.